Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about this latest lens from Cerewi, which is this 50mm T2.9 anamorphic lens. So what's so special about this lens versus some of the other lenses they've released in the past? Well this is, as you can notice, is slightly larger and that's because it covers a full frame sensor. Now this is designed for mirrorless full frame cameras. Uh, the version that I have up here is the Sony E mount, but you can also get it in the Nikon Z mount, RF mount or L mount. Now another thing that's unusual about this lens is its uh, squeeze aspect ratio, which is 1.6x. The previous lineup of the serial lenses were all 1.33x and that fit perfectly if you're shooting on a standard 16x9 image sensor because you would end up with a 2.4 to 1 uh, widescreen aspect ratio. If you put this lens on a few of the mirrorless cameras that are able to shoot in 3.2 mode, then you'll actually get the 2.4 uh, to 1 aspect ratio. Otherwise, on a 16 by 9 image sensor, you're going to get a 2.8 to 1. That essentially means that the image will be even wider. Now, some of you guys might like it, and all the footage I'm going to show you in this video was shot on the Sony a7S III uh, in 16x9, so you're going to see that wider aspect ratio. First, let's talk about the image quality you're going to get with this lens. Well, just like with the previous serial lenses, the sharpness on this lens is really amazing, especially when you consider that this is an anamorphic lens. If you know anything about shooting anamorphic, you'll know that majority of anamorphic lenses have to be stepped down one or two f-stops at least to get a, a decently sharp image. Well, I can tell you with this lens, I've shot pretty much everything completely wide open and I've never had any problems getting nice sharpness uh, and you're still getting the shallow depth of field but like I said the parts of the image that are actually in focus are exceptionally sharp uh, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at the center or even the corners of the image now what about the lens flare well this being an anamorphic lens you're definitely going to get those horizontal nice looking kind of bluish light streaks and overall just the lens flare kind of the shapes that you're going to get with this lens uh, look very again organic but very anamorphic at the same time 
uh, they don't look too digital, you know what I mean? But they're there and they're definitely noticeable. Now, if you don't wanna get any of those anamorphic horizontal lens flares, uh, in your final image, then you can definitely get rid of that or by controlling the, the light spills. So using, for example, uh, flags or just shading your lens or putting a matte box on it. Now those horizontal lens flares can sometimes seem like they're too noticeable, especially, like I said, when you're shooting straight into actual light sources. Uh, like for example, like these shots here I got at this ice cream shop where there was just a lot of neon lighting and you'll notice that the, the horizontal lens flares just kind of wash out the whole image and it almost looks excessive there. Uh, in those cases, there's really nothing you can do because again, you can't really put a matte box or anything to black something that's visible in the shot. Uh, now, Siri did say that uh, the version that I have is a pre-production model that they send in for, to me to test out. And the final production model that you can get right now, uh, if you follow the link in the description of this video to their Indiegogo, uh, the final production model is actually going to have some coating on it that reduces the lens flare slightly. Now getting back to the 1.6 uh, squeeze aspect ratio, uh, I know some of you guys might be thinking, okay, how can I actually view this image or compose my shots? Definitely when you're shooting, when you're on location, you wanna have a monitor that allows you to properly de-squeeze the image. I actually end up using the Atomos Ninja 5, and that one doesn't actually have 1.6, but it has 1.5 de-squeeze aspect ratio and that worked perfectly for me because even though there's a tiny bit of a difference you really don't notice it and it allows you to actually see the, your composition it allows you to focus perfectly uh, now there are actually a few monitors out there these days that uh, I'll do have 1.6 de-squeeze aspect ratios so just keep that in mind that if you're getting this lens also make sure you get yourself a monitor that allows you to de-squeeze the image properly Like I said before, this is a T2.9 lens, meaning the aperture opens that wide or it's that fast, uh, which is actually uh, slightly lower. I think it's around 2 point something, I don't know, 2.0 or 2 point something, uh, if you were to compare this to like, a, like an f-stop. Uh, so definitely a nice fast lens, again, especially considering that it's an anamorphic lens. Which again means that if you're shooting with a sort of a compact setup, let's say you throw this on the, particularly if you throw it on the Sony a7S III, but with most mirrorless cameras these days, if you put this on there and you're kind of running and gunning with this and you're in an environment where you can't really control the lighting and you're shooting with really low light, uh, having a T2.9 lens comes in really handy. You'll notice also that the aperture, uh, but also the focus rings are geared 
uh, because this is already built like a standard cinema lens. Uh, it's nicely built actually, it's all metal body construction, very solid. Uh, they actually give you a, a quarter inch uh, mount on the bottom, so if you're let's say attaching a really small mirrorless camera or light mirrorless camera, then you can actually attach this directly or just you can use this for extra support. You're gonna get a nice 82 millimeter threaded front here, so for your cinema filters and the same thing when it comes to mud boxes. When you're pulling focus, you'll notice that the front of the lens does not rotate or move in and out, which again is very handy when you're using this with sort of a standard cinema setup where you're gonna have a mud box in front. Now, if you've never shot with anamorphic lenses before, there's something to keep in mind with this lens and all anamorphic lenses, uh, is that you will not be able to get very, very close to your subject and be able to still focus without some kind of uh, diopters in front of your lens. So just the way that this lens is, the closest you can get is 0.75 uh, meters or uh, 2.5 feet. That means that you'll be able to get a nice close-up of somebody's face, uh, but if you actually want to go even closer, let's say get a close-up of their eye, uh, then the only way to do that is again by putting a diopter in front of this lens. Now that's not exclusive to this lens, that's sort of the limitation with uh, sort of anamorphic lens elements. Uh, so every anamorphic lens is going to kind of suffer from that, that, that the minimal focus distance is not going to be that cl as close as for example you'll be able to get with spherical lenses. So far, having just shot the little camera test with this lens, I'm actually very excited with kind of images that I'm getting, and I really can't wait to actually use this lens on an actual production. Now, obviously for that, uh, I would probably need more focal lengths than just this 50 millimeter. Siroe is already working on three other affordable full-frame anamorphic lenses uh, that are gonna match this perfectly. They're saying that both the focus and the aperture rings are in the same positions, and that of course makes it a lot easier when you're working with a standard cinema setup where you might have uh, matte packs and let's say a follow focus and things like that already set up on rails. So when you're switching the those lenses, you do not have to adjust any of those things. It doesn't matter which lens you go with. And the other focal lengths they're working on is 35 millimeters, uh, 75 millimeters and 100 millimeters. So if you're looking to get into anamorphic or maybe you've already experimented with anamorphic and kind of realized that there's uh, two possibilities ready of going here. They'll go the, the traditional but very expensive way. And also with those expensive lenses, especially full frame anamorphic lenses, uh, you're gonna be working with lenses that are much, much bigger and heavier than this. So your whole camera setup right away is much bigger. And then that means that your support gear, probably your crew and everything is gonna be bigger. So it's definitely not something that most indie productions will wanna work with. Now the other affordable way of going with anamorphic was to uh, do a lot of the sort of lens hacking, usually taking projection anamorphic lenses and kind of hacking them. Uh, but then that created a lot of problems with focusing uh, and also created a very big bulky kind of setups. Of course, when Siroe came out with their 1.33 squeeze aspect ratio uh, anamorphic lenses, they've really kind of made anamorphic affordable uh, and easy to work with. So now seeing them jump into the full frame anamorphic game uh, with this 50 millimeter lens is very exciting to me and I honestly cannot wait to actually try out their other lenses. Hopefully they're as good as this one. So if you guys wanna get the early discounted price, definitely again, go to their Indiegogo page. Link in the description, not sponsored or affiliated. And also check out my website at tomantosfilms.com. Uh, subscribe to the newsletter there because I will be very soon releasing some more things that I've shot with this lens that will kind of give you an even better idea of kind of the image quality and the kind of look that you can expect with this lens. Anyways, that's it for this one. My name is Tom and as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!